Do you need deep learning to become a self-driving car engineer? That's what we'll try to figure out today. So here are the four pillars of autonomous driving, perception, localization, planning, and control. The first step, which we'll do today, is perception. Perception is about discovering the environment and detecting the obstacles, so everything around you. Then localization tomorrow will be about estimating your position as a vehicle in the world and like centimeter level accuracy. Then planning will be to um, predict the future positions of obstacle and then anticipate and plan a trajectory from A to B. And once you have planned that trajectory, control command is about generating the correct steering angle and acceleration value to follow that planned trajectory. So let's start with perception. And um, we have these three sensors, so the cameras, the LIDARs, and the radars. And then we have a sensor fusion module. And we'll try to see for each of these, where is deep learning involved? And is there a deep learning somewhere? So computer vision is about using cameras. And for that, we might try to find lane lines, maybe the road segmentation. We might want to detect obstacle uh, we might want to detect objects in 2D, traffic sites, um, light detection, road markings, stuff like this. And then we also have this idea of estimating the distance directly, uh, doing 3D computer vision, trying to find 3D bounding boxes, all of that. So let's start with lane line detection. We always have two things. We have traditional approaches and deep learning approaches. If you're looking at this, you'll see that every time I included a traditional way and a deep learning way, and then a course recommendation if you want to learn it. So the traditional way to find lane lines will be to use cutting edge detection, um, every open CV function like Sobel filters, Hoff transforms, bird's eye view detection, stuff like this to end up um, finding lane lines because you mentioned what is a lane line before. You explained it physically with um, this is a dark pixel, then there is a white pixel, so there is this contrast, and so the, this is a lane line. And then you have learning approaches, so algorithms like lane net, or even like segmentation approaches such as Deep Lab or UNet can be very powerful to segment the lane line or sometimes directly regress the lane equation coefficient, because let's remember that this is a lane line equation. And so I included two courses for that. The first is uh, in the self-driving car nano degree from Udacity. You learn all of these techniques on traditional. And on segmentation, I have a course on that with Think Autonomous. The thing is, there is no um, involvement of lane lines. There is simply the involvement of finding the road segmentation. Now let's view the second thing, which is 2D object detection. And this is like the most popular thing. This is what everybody knows. Um, we have first an idea of machine learning. So using histogram of oriented gradient plus support vector machines, adding a sliding window, that's what a lot of people um, did back then. And uh, if you follow the self-driving car nano degree, you also have this understanding of how does it work. So you hand code some features and then you have a sliding window approach. Unfortunately, this has been... Um, revolutionized by deep learning and now models like YOLO, SSD, RetinaNet, all of that can help in detecting 2D bounding boxes. And that's what we want to do here, detecting the class, but also detecting the coordinates location. And so if you follow the deep learning specialization, there is a convolutional neural network module and there is an object detection part which you can follow. So this is really like the basics of deep learning. This is the most um, the, the simplest thing you can learn on deep learning for self-driving car is this thing. And, um, and then there is also like 3D reconstruction. Um, so if you're using monocular camera, you need to uh, use a neural network to directly estimate a 3D bounding box. And that can be really tricky. That can be very difficult. And that's why many people also use stereo vision. So in stereo vision, you have two types of matching. So matching is like when you have two cameras, you can try and find a specific point in a camera. Uh, let's say, for example, the, the wheel or something. 
And once you have that point, you can try and find the same point at another, on the other camera, right? So um, let's say the mirror on the car, you can find it exactly at another, at another pixel, and that is called matching. So you have traditional block matching, and I have just released a course on that with Fink Autonomous, and you also have deep matching. And this time we're using neural networks to do the matching. And so ultimately you have an estimation of point clouds. You can project that on the image. You have 3D reconstruction, you have 3D estimation. So X, Y, Z coordinates, and that is really powerful. So that's it for computer vision. As you see, there is a lot of topics. Now we have also LiDAR. And uh, about computer vision, you might see that there is deep learning everywhere involved. So about LiDAR, the, the main thing is really to detect the objects and the road. So as you can see in this fantastic image, um, you have two different techniques. You have unsupervised machine learning, so KD trees, Euclidean clustering, RENSAC, uh, sample consensus algorithms, all of that is using traditional approaches. And I have released a course on that. You can also find it with the Udacity Sensor Fusion Nano Degree. That's a really great course. Um, I'd say the difference is that mine is just focused on point clouds and the sensor fusion is really about uh, the whole stack of many sensors. And obviously, there is a deep learning approach for that because um, let's say you have a pedestrian and you're using these approaches uh, of unsupervised machine learning. These are not really efficient for that. And that's why deep learning uh, point pillars, voxel net, uh, Renlanet, graph convolutional networks, all of that are very um, in vogue today. That's very used today. Many people are researching on that. So deep learning for point clouds, uh, that might be my next course. So uh, stay focused on that. That's a really um, active area. Now there is radar. So radar is mostly used to estimate velocities. Um, that's useful for speed estimation, obstacle detection. Uh, there is a lot of radar involved that's very, very mature today. Again, we have like an idea of using um, FMCW modulation, the Doppler effect to find the speed of the vehicle. So that's what you can learn with the Udacity Sensor Fusion Nano Degree. And you also have like some models using deep learning to output a 3D obstacle using LiDAR. So I put the names of some papers here. If you want to find more papers, if you want to uh, maybe see the papers, stuff like this, you can check for papers with code. And um, that is one great way. Like if you're typing radar detection, uh, that's mostly deep learning papers. And so you can find uh, some great radar detection here. If you want to find some repos, uh, for example, here we have lane line detection, you have awesome lane line and here are all the papers and basically, if you type awesome anything, you can find a repo that explains it. All right, so back to it. And now there is the sensor fusion part. So sensor fusion is really hard. There is a lot of topics and the more and more we will see deep learning and sensor fusion. So there are three sensors. And so there are three main things. There is LiDAR camera fusion. There is LiDAR stereo camera fusion. There is radar camera fusion and radar LiDAR fusion. And we could also add some uh, radar, LiDAR, camera fusion, like the whole, three, the whole three sensors. So if we start with LiDAR camera, every time in sensor fusion, you will see an early fusion and a late fusion. So early fusion is about finding, uh, fusing the raw data. So uh, you have point clouds, you have pixels, you're fusing that. And late fusion is about fusing the results of the independent detections. So you're fusing a 2D bonding box with a 3D bonding box, stuff like this. So in early fusion, you can have feature tracking, um, feature matching. So that is very, uh, very well explained in the sensor fusion nano degree. And that's, uh, that's what you can use. But now people are trying to include deep learning for that so that it's even more fast and even more powerful. And so here are some models you can use. And then for late fusion, um, you can do IOU matching using heuristic Hungarian algorithms. I have a course on that, but I did not include it because it's mostly about tracking. And then you have uh, MOTS fusion complex or YOLO. So this is only about 
uh, fusing data from LiDAR and a camera and then trying to have one only estimate. Then there is LiDAR and stereo camera. So um, here are a few models using deep learning. It's very hard to do with traditional techniques. So uh, mostly deep learning is involved today. And you also have radar camera fusion. And here we only have late fusion because it's very hard to fuse raw data from a radar and, um, and pixels. And you also have that with radar and LiDAR. And so basically for, for this thing, you have traditional approaches with uh, heuristic, um, IOU matching, stuff like this. And then you have deep learning. And so center fusion, fusion net, CRF net, that's what, um, you, that's the sort of papers you can find on the topic. And again, there is deep learning from that. And then for radar and LIDAR, um, I did not find many deep learning papers. Actually, I did not find any deep learning papers on that. Uh, maybe I'm not aware. Uh, maybe you can point me to uh, some papers, but basically we're using Kalman filters for that in a late fusion process. What do I mean by this? The radar will output some 3D coordinates of an obstacle. The LIDAR will do the same. And so with Kalman filters, you will try and fuse that to have one uh, precise estimate. So I have a complete course on linear Kalman filters that you can find. And for extended and scented Kalman filters, you have um, the self driving car nano degree that is explaining this. Also, there is the sensor fusion nano degree, I think, that's doing this. And some, um, a Coursera course uh, the, on the self driving car specialization called, um, I think it's motion estimation for self driving cars or something like that. So here's the complete map for perception. And as you can see, there is this orange deep learning everywhere. It's not really orange, but anyway, there is a lot of deep learning here. Um, there is deep learning for lane line detection, for object detection in 2D, for object detection in 3D. There is deep learning from LiDAR, for radar, for camera fusion, um, for LiDAR stereo camera, for radar camera fusion. So there is deep learning everywhere. Tomorrow, I'll show you that for localization, for planning, for control, we have exactly the same thing. So you can use that to try and understand um, everything that you have to learn, but also try and understand um, where can you focus on deep learning. Again, you don't have to understand all of this to become a self-driving car engineer, right? Uh, if you don't understand radar, that's perfectly okay. Maybe some of your colleagues will. Well, uh, the idea is that you understand one thing and if it's, it would be preferable to also understand a fusion part. So if you have computer vision plus LiDAR camera fusion, that can be cool. If you have LiDAR fusion, uh, LiDAR perception plus LiDAR radar fusion, that can be cool too. Try and have one of each. All right, so uh, that sums up the, the whole perception thing. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you tomorrow for localization.